Welcome to Indie Resources fourth video on how to make an HTML5 game using Impact and Node. Um, in this video I wanted, um, we're going to go over a couple things here, but the first thing I wanted to go over was um, a, a cool resource site that is uh, kind of a part of the Impact, it's part of the community and everything. If you go if you go to impactjs.com and then you go to the tools and the second link is Point of Impact, if you click there you'll go to a really cool site. This site has um, a lot of games and a lot of um, resources and little snippets and codes and all kinds of things that are part of that, that go with impact or that, or that can be used with impact and this is this is community driven um, real cool site I've been trolling here for the past couple days love it there's a lot of cool um, games in here that you can play um, make sure when you play them you know come in here rate them let the let the developers know you know what the, what you like what you don't like because that really does help um, the resources they have some cool resources in here you can go through tutorials I'm gonna put my tutorials in here and just kinda of check it out and when you get to the point that you can start adding stuff to it make sure to add to it so we can just kinda of make this really cool um, community of, of, of sharing all this stuff because you know HTML5 of course is the future but the um, the impact is just an awesome engine I'd love to see some more development around you know from the community so this would be a great place to start so make sure to, to co come here and check it out um, with that said, <clears throat> let's get back to our game. When we left off, we basically got the guy moving. That's about it. Um, in this video, I kind of want to go over what I want to do is I want to make a chat, not necessarily a chat system. I want eventually it to turn into a chat system. For now, it's going to be kind of a debugging system. It's just going to print out whatever we want it to print out, but it's also going to do game events. And I can't think of any right now, but it, let's say you're searching if you find something or if whatever it may be, I want to print out some game events up here. So I want to get that out of the way first because we're going to use it for debugging a lot. So if you go to your code, and I'm going to do all this on the fly and really think it through very much because it shouldn't be too hard. So if I make mistakes, I just make mistakes. You have to bear with me, but at least we can kind of learn it together. Um, the first thing I can think of is I, I want this, the message box or whatever it is to be part of the player because when we get into multiplayer, I want to be able to pass that information with the player object so we're not passing double, you know, double the amount. I want it to all be part of the player, and we can tie that message box or that message to the player's name. So... Let's create a new property on the player and let's just call it message box. Um, okay, we're just going to leave it blank. But I tell you what, to start out, let's just let's just say test. It, it equals test. To, if we go to our main, <coughs> you'll notice in the draw function down here, we have this is where we're going to draw everything to the screen, and this is running on ticks, so it's constantly going to be running. If we just comment this out, it's going to draw this font dot draw, which this font we've initialized up here and gave it, and given it an image that's an actual if you look at the image it's just images of the, of the characters um, we're going to change that in a minute but for now let's let's just get it to work okay we don't want it to say this has changed we want it to say the the message box of the player so what we need to do is we need to grab this variable and put it here in the draw because update function and draw function are two different functions they're not going to share anything so you need to tell it hey we need to grab the player again so we've got the player so now what we're going to do is come in here and move this. This is changed to player dot message box. That way, anything that's in the player's message box and that variable, that container, is going to be printed here. Um, and let's just test that to be sure that it works. If we refresh, <clears throat> there it is. Little font. So I, I want to go ahead and change that font real quick before we do anything else. So another really cool tool. If we go back to our impact site, let me just go back to impactjs.com. If we go to the documents. <clears throat> And we scroll down here to the font under graphics. Here's a really cool font tool. There's a link right here. And we can come down here and I'm going to go to Corbell. One thing I did do was come through these and kind of look for a decent one that I wouldn't be spending 40 minutes trying to find a cool font. And I'm going to change it to about 17 and I'm going to change the color to white. One, two, three, four, five, six. And generate. And there's my font. So I want to save it. You notice there's nothing here. Well, there is something here. It's just because it's white on white. So if you come up here and click, you have to click kind of way up here and do save as. We can save it as a new font. I'm just going to change it to, this is 04B03. I'm just going to change it to, whoops, I'm going to change it to 4. And we'll save it. You can, you can save over the other one. That one's fine, but I just would rather save it as that. So if we go to, uh, back to... And the main reason why I changed the name is I want to show you how to make an additional font. I'm just going to copy this if you go back to your main.js and I'm going to make this font 2. And we're going to change it to 4. Now, normally I would get this one out of the way, but I'm just going to leave it there for now just to kind of give you an idea of what's happening here. So if we come down here, 
and we change this to 2, it should change to that new font. And if we retest it, there's the new font. So you could go back to 1 or the original font just by removing that 2, and it'll actually go back to the original font. So you can have multiple fonts depending on you know, what, what you're wanting to print out. <clears throat> but of course, we're going to stick with this 2. And I'm going to go ahead and just comment this out just so it's one less resource for now because I'm not really going to use it. I tell you what, just to make this easier, let's just change the name on this to regular font, and we'll just make this the new font. <clears throat> so we have it drawn up there, but the thing is, it's drawn in the center of the screen. We don't want it there, so let's change that. And it, right now it's still on X and Y, which is the center of the screen, which we don't really care about, so I'm just going to delete. And instead, I'm going to make it to where it is... Um, X is, of course, your, your um, left and right, basically. So we're going to make it... Um, let's try 300 and down we want to make it only about 10. Now I don't know where that's going to put it. And let's get rid of the center as well. And thanks Dale for popping that up right now. Um, let's let's see where that puts us. So that puts us up here. Still not far enough over where I want. So let me bring it to about 350. Uh, that'll work for now because I really don't know how long the messages are going to be yet. So we'll leave it there. Now we just have this message just sitting up there. Test. It's not really doing anything. I want it to slowly scroll through. And, and to give you an idea, let's do this. Let's um, let's go back to our player. And we're going to delete that and just make it a blank one. But what we're going to do is every time that I hit the up key, I want it to tell me I'm hitting the up key. So we just do player dot message box. Oops. Equals player dot. Man, I can't type message box plus <clears throat> actually I don't want to do a plus yet I'm not I'm not ready for that Let, let's leave that out for a minute let's just do this let's just make it say you pressed up just to give you an example real quick so let's refresh we hit up and looks like we're locked up so let's figure out what happened and I'm pretty sure I know what happened, but let's go ahead and just go to our JavaScript console and it'll tell you player is not defined. The reason why is because player is not defined inside of player. It's actually this. Save that. Refresh. Get this out of the way. And now you can see it's pressed up. Every time I press it, it's, it's, it's just going over and over again. But it's not going away. Again. So let's do, now let's do this dot message box plus you pressed up. Now you're going to see it just stretch across the screen like crazy. See? <clears throat> so we don't like that. So what we need to do is we need to do a new line after each one of them. So let's space and let's put the new line character and now let's see what that does. Now you can see it's it's going down but the same thing. It just continues to go down and it never goes away and it just keeps going up. I want these to go away over a certain amount of time like a normal game does. So let, let's get that to work. What we need to do is basically we just need to first thing is create a timer that, that goes off that says okay we need to delete the delete one message so let's create a new thing and let's just call it um, message box timer and let's set it to 200 for I'll tell you what just to make it quicker let's set it to 100 message box timer okay so if we go to our main now we need to implement this well first thing we need to do is we need to count down that message box timer so let's let's do message box timer and of course we have to do player first because it's in the player property player dot message box timer equals player dot message box timer minus one so it's going to continue to count down for every tick now what happens when it gets to zero let's define that if message box timer is less than one so even if it goes past zero it's still gonna work um, first thing we need to do is say message box timer equals 100 we need to reset it again so it starts back over again <clears throat> so when it reaches the the zero. That's when we need to make our code. First thing we need to do is we need to make a container to carry because we, but we need, basically what we have to do is we have to break down the message box. We have to turn it into an array, break it down, <clears throat> and build that array again minus that that first that last message that was in there. So what we do is we say let's do new text equals 
and we're just blank and let's make that a var so we know we're we're, we're initializing it and starting it over for every hundred ticks <coughs> now what we need to do is we need to split up the message box so let's just say var new split uh, equals player dot message box dot split and we're going to split it by this the the breaks so basically in in this array it's going to build an array and for each in each segment of the array each section of the array it's going to put our messages in there it's split up by this this line break and so then we need to loop through that so we do four and there could be other ways to do this it's just the easiest way I'm, I'm just making it simple bar i equals zero and then f run in, run while um, new split dot length um, i is less than I forgot the i is less than so we want it to, to run while it's less than the length of the array the total amount of array and then we do i plus plus because we need it to, to build up so for each one of those we want it to rebuild the message except for the first one so what we need to do is we need to put in um, if i is greater than one because we want to skip the first one then we want to say new text equals new text because we want to keep building it this is going to cause a little issue but we're going to we'll fix it much later plus we want to add in a new line in there it's better to do it here so it doesn't create a, a, a gap in there plus your new split i so wherever that i is in that counter we want that array that array to rebuild back into new text and just looking at this i'm assuming that it's going to work um, the next thing we need to do is just say uh, I guess we could build it actually inside of this array. Let's try this first. Um, player, not array, but the the where this is dropping. Um, player dot message box equals new text. Hmm, I believe that's gonna work. So let's let's just try it out just to see. Let's hit refresh and we got an issue so if we come down here and we go to our tools and we go to javascript command I've probably spelled something wrong message yeah uh, message box timer is not defined mainjs.48 let's refresh let's go to our um, 48 ah, that's why player dot message box whoops and then player dot <coughs> Let's see if that fixes it. Okay, so so we pressed up. Uh, it looks like I reversed my in. Save it. Refresh it. Told you I'd have some errors in here. Okay, so we got four. We we're dropping them now. If you notice that little gap I was talking about, that's what's happening. We can fix that later, but I'm not concerned with it right now. But if you notice, for every hundred, it's it's dropping away. Um, what's going down in there? Not only that, it's dropping in the wrong order. We're also going to fix that later. I just want basically want to get this up here for a debug, kind of a debug method. Um, and basically, a lot of it has to do with how we're how we're entering in the split. You could um, because of the way the split is going in and the way we're doing it here. That that's what's happening. And just to give you a better idea of what's going on, let's do this. Let's take our up and let's do this. Let's copy it and let's do the right key and you pressed right so that way when we refresh let's go up and to the right <clears throat> you'll see it's that well, actually it is cutting away the up so maybe it is working right okay so it is working right I was thinking it was reversed because of the, the way it's dropping but it's actually working right now so we're good the only thing that's left over is this little box here that and once this goes away We'll let it completely delete. It, that box may, be, may stay the whole time. See, see how it drops and then it comes down? That's because it's creating this new line right here. And to, let me go back to my main. It's creating this new line even though this is blank. Now what you could do is if it's the first one, then don't do this. Leave out that. But I, I'm just not interested in it right now because I'm mainly using this for debug. And as we build the chat system later, we're going to fix this up and make it a lot prettier anyway. So it works for now, so I'm happy with it. Um, 
So basically, you can kind of see how we make some new properties in here, and we we use the draw function to kind of create a kind of create something new um, in just a, a little box that's right there. And, and it's not much of a video as far as creating a game, but we, at least we got a debug method, and we got a little chat box in there that we can eventually build on later.